It is yeah, hotter than the devil's dick in this fucking studio. <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty bad here. So, uh, and it's just in the eighties. It's only going to get worse. Ew. Yeah, it's <laughs> it hit. I think it hit a hundred here. Uh, okay. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> well, I mean, that's that's normal this time of year. Like my husband's like, oh my god, it, it hit hundred so fast, and I'm like, yeah, but it's June. It's yeah, June. I was just- <laughs> I was just kind of hoping because they said that there's like a, uh, we were supposed to have like a cold and rainy uh, Ooh, June or whatever. That would be so and, cool. Yeah, but it's not happened yet, so. Mm, lame. Um, I will say this because uh, Southern California is the devil. I mean, at 65 <laughs> degrees, if you're walking down the street at 10 o'clock in the morning, you will get sunburned. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a different kind of heat but obviously uh kayla and i were there at fucking 85 degrees and we did okay so i mean it wasn't it wasn't stifling at all i mean yeah there's water rides to go on and everything but we only went i feel like we only went on one so anyways whatever all right um Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Death Holler. This is the second part of the Nightmare on Elm Street wrap-up episode. I'm your host, Reverend Dr. Death, and joining me as always is La Urena. How are you to, uh, at this moment, I should say? <laughs> yeah. Hey, same day, same welcome day. back. <laughs> We're here yeah. again. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm more awake, definitely. So there's that, because it's not fucking 5 o'clock in the morning for me. <laughs> Well, that makes a difference, at least. Yes, and I got a good night's sleep. Well, no, let me rephrase. I did not get a good night's sleep. I had a nap, but I had no nightmares. So, there's that. Uh, well, the movie we're discussing, I doubt you had any nightmares, <laughs> but we'll get into that. I might have had nightmares, but not the kind that, you know, make you fear in fear of your life or anything. Yeah, that's true. Um, this episode, we are discussing A Nightmare on Elm Street, the 2010 remake, which is probably the most reviled remake that came out around the time that they were making all of these, but we'll get into that too. Uh, Tagline, never sleep again. Pretty standard. They're just going back to the old ones on that one. (laughs) They got real creative with that one. Uh, All you have to do is dream, dot, dot, dot. Mm. He He knows where you sleep. That's creepy. Which that one, yeah, well, that one, given the context of the movie, is pretty gross, actually. So, <laughs> yeah, actually, we should give a warning now. It's going to get real gross. If you haven't seen this movie, you're in for a disgusting surprise that you don't want. Yeah, I hate to use the word trigger warning, but yeah. this legit has stuff that I think could trigger people. If you have like a history of any kind of abuse or anything, like, especially as a child. This is probably not something you should listen to because this movie it 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 goes there. Yeah, um, any assault or harassment, yeah, it, it's going to yeah. be touched on uh, very inappropriately. Yeah, uh, directed by Samuel Bayer, uh, written by Wesley Strick, uh, Eric Heiserer, and Wes Craven, which you know, it's just based on his characters. He actually didn't have a hand in any of this, that, to my knowledge. Uh, music by Steve Le- Jablonski. Uh, made for a budget of $35 million, this thing made $117.7 million. Yeah, so double so, its, uh, <laughs> double its uh, more than double its, uh, not income, the fuck, budget. Budget, well, and that 117 just makes me sick to my stomach because we covered uh, Wes Craven's New Nightmare, and it only made like $19 million or something like that. And, spoiler alert, it's a much better movie than this, but... Uh, I mean, not say this is terrible and we'll get into that, but it's just like 117 million. Seriously, this, this had to have been riding off of the uh, two, two or three different things. A 
people seem, for the most part, to have liked the Friday the 13th remake that came out yeah. with uh, with Jared Padalecki. So that, that ha- and it's the same company that made this. The Texas Chainsaw remake that we covered already with Jessica uh, Bills. Yeah. So... Uh, it was so it had a little bit of that going into it, and of course, it'd been years since we'd seen anything with you know Freddy at all. So, uh, there was a primed audience. I mean, we went from 1994 until this, I think. Well, I take that back. Freddy versus Jason was the last one that you kind that you really saw, you know, uh, Freddy at all in, and then and then this film. So. Yeah, would you say the fans were clamoring for him? I would say so, <laughs> and <laughs> I would also, I know you're joking about that, but I also think that they were interested to see how the mantle would be passed from, you know, England to uh, Jackie Earl Haley. And man, that created some mixed reviews. (laughs) Yeah. You know, I will give it to Jackie is I would have, I would have been scared to take this role. Um. This is a little bit of trivia that I just learned right, literally right before we logged in to do this. Uh, Devin Sawa has came out and said that he wants to throw his hat in the ring to play Freddy. Mm, I mean, that doesn't disappoint me. He's got some He's got some horror under his belt. He, he's got actually quite a bit, yeah. and he's got some charisma to him. I mean, I'll, he's he's pretty entertaining in idle hands, mm-hmm. I mean, as far, as far as his character goes. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know that I hate that. I, and he's older, so he doesn't look like the baby face guy that you remember from back in the day. Even if he did, I mean, makeup but, is gonna yeah. makeup is gonna make him make make it what you ain't, you know. <laughs> uh, and not only that, but here's the thing: is that is it too much to ask that the one and only Freddy Krueger himself? You know, Robert England, that he be involved with the pick of the cast. I mean. It, you know, I feel like a person, uh, any standard Joe that thinks that they could do it would buckle under pressure having him watching and and, and judging. He's a really nice guy. I think he'd be honest, you know? Yeah, I don't know. It would be nice if they would consult him. I don't think Robert's too nice to sit there yeah, and just that's weed true. people out. <laughs> but Robert. I think it would be nice if they, which is funny given who he plays, but we've said this already. Uh, I think it would be nice if they consulted him so that he kind of because he he knows the character he knows the character better than Wes does or, or did yes. at the time of his death because he played the character well much so, like I Wes mean, said about you know Heather <laughs> you made you know this character he she made Nancy he made Freddie yeah and if anybody and 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 if they want it to be successful with the fans they've got to do the opposite of what they did with this film mm-hmm. and they've got to have Robert in social media pass the baton yes. to the next person. Do we you have know, in trivia what he thought of Jackie? Uh, maybe. I think okay. that there's something in there about that. Okay, cool. Um, so, um, but anyways, kudos to the box office on this, considering the backlash that it attained shortly after it came out. Ooh, I mean, I, did you watch it when it came out in theater? I obviously I did, did not. I did not because I was going to, and the, like, I... I waited a week. Uh, um, uh, life, you know, happened or whatever, and the and people started bashing it so hard in the circles I ran in. I'm like, all right, I'm I'm not gonna you know yeah. even attempt it then if it's like that. I feel like if I had uh, seen it in the theater, I would have been like, I think I would have been more heartbroken than anything. I don't think I would have been mad. And, and that's not, not saying that I didn't like the film. So we'll get into that later. But I mean, yeah, you know, and I. I'm the same way, and I, and it's not Jackie's fault because Mm-mm. he actually, it's this is in the trivia. He wanted to add more personality to Freddy, but they told him they said we want you to be deadpan, serious, scary mm-hmm. in this. Yeah. No, Mm-mm. no offbeat stuff like the original. And he he did what they asked him to. Yeah. And you know that's what we got. I think if that's the case, he acted the fuck out of what was given to him. For I sure. think so too, and and he's a great actor. If you uh, debate that, I suggest anybody go watch The Watchman and and uh, Rorschach, the character he plays in that movie, is probably one of the best anti heroes I've ever seen put to film. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, principal players in this movie is uh, Rooney Mara playing Nancy Holbrook, oh, our final girl. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, she's. Uh, it was bad to compare her to Heather in this yes. combination 
<laughs> it, it really was. It was. Why even make her Nancy? She. It was should have been. She should have been in New Nightmare playing Rooney. Uh, exactly. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what. I, the person that I think should have been Nancy in this was Katie Cassidy. Yes, one hundred percent. She stood out way more in this film, and she had more of a presence than Rooney Mara did. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, so Rooney Mara was in the social network, the movie Her, Kubo and the Two Strings. There you go. Oh, shit. Uh, she starred in The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Mm-hmm. Uh, talk about a rough movie, they'll trigger you. Ooh. That's got some stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, everyone, <laughs> usually the people who saw I didn't see it. I heard enough about it. I heard about the book and about the movie. So, yeah. Yeah, and Urban Legends Bloody Mary, so we could possibly see her again this season. Um, a ghost story and Nightmare Alley. So she actually has some chops when it comes to like, you know, scary movies. Uh, hold on one second, Reverend. Entering the studio, we've got the hubs. He's finally <laughs> graced us with his presence. Oh my God, dude. It's hotter than Jason's. I mean, there's Jason's. Freddy's like. I said hotter than the devil's <laughs> dick, so uh, yeah. Freddy would be more appropriate. It's hotter yes. than Freddy's uh, steam room, man. Holy <laughs> shit, it's hot in California. <laughs> Well, they're in the 80s, and they're having a hard time out there. I told them we're in the 100s, yeah, but it's a different kind of heat. We went from, like, 88 all of a sudden to 100, like, within a couple of days. Yeah, yeah, we went from 60 to 80, so it <laughs> was, I mean, the, the transition for us was it was bad in another way. But too, y'all got so. that southern heat, so um, yeah, we, we I, I'm not trying to mess heat. with that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. yeah, we get it's, used to it's it, got, man. It, it's just California has always had... Everybody's like, it's so hot. It's like, no, it's always hot in California, in the valley. It's always in the hundreds. It, it'll be 110 by the end of the month. Don't drink water on your microphone. <laughs> wow. Okay, moving on. Uh, so, Jackie Earl Haley, we have covered so far for Noah, so he knows, or any Mara. Uh, we've not, I mean, we'll give our thoughts about her toward the end. We kind of have, but we'll give more thoughts on it. Uh, Jackie Earl Haley, playing Freddy Krueger in this, who is, of course, our slasher. Um, much darker history for this version of Freddy. Uh, it was implied that the original Freddy by England was supposed to have this history, but, man, they went for it in this fucking Oh, film. boy, did they. <laughs> Uh, I've already mentioned he was in The Watchmen. Great character, Rorschach, in that movie. Uh, the Dark Tower. Uh, Could have been a better movie, but they, they fucked that one up. Um, he's really good in Shutter Island. Uh, he was in the Preacher TV series. A really good character in that. Maniac Cop 3, Badge of Silence, and the Tick TV series. Which oh, my good. God. I loved the Tick. <laughs> um, Kyle Gallner, uh, who has been on this podcast before, is playing Quentin Smith, who is the stand-in for Glenn and Nancy's boyfriend. Uh, he's been a, in a ton of horror-related materials. Smile, uh, recently. Wow. Uh, Scream 5. Damn. Uh, R- Red State, The Cleansing Hour, the one that we covered uh, in the first season of this show. Uh, Jennifer's Body, which we will cover. Uh, Veronica Mars, and then Smallville. So Holy he's been shit. in a ton. He's been in a ton of shit that I've watched. He was also in Nexium. <laughs> Shut up. Was he? No, he wasn't. <laughs> no, but it sounds good. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, Clancy Brown, which is uh, one of my favorite actors, uh, plays Alan Smith in this, Quentin's father. Uh, doesn't have a big part in this film, unfortunately. Uh, he was in the Shawshank Redemption, played one of the asshole guards in that movie. Uh, Pet Cemetery 2, he played a really good character in that, the uh, stepdad that comes back. And, uh, oh, man, that's a that's a pretty good villain in a movie. Yeah. Um, the Mortuary Collection uh, that came out recently on Shudder. Uh, Thor Ragnarok, uh, John Wick 4, he's known as Mr. Krabby to a lot of people. Yeah. Mr. Krabs, and Eugene he, Krabs? Yeah, I will always know him as Eugene Krabs now. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he just does a ton of voice work. Like, but his voice, he's got that voice. It's a really deep, really uh, strong voice. I mean, it, he's perfect for voice acting. Um, Kellen Lutz plays Dean Russell, Chris's new boyfriend, childhood friend. Uh, he was in the Twilight Saga. Uh, <laughs> wow. We we are not going to be covering that series during <laughs> vampire season. We've got enough vampire movies we can cover. Instead. Unless we do a riff track of some sorts on that. That that's, uh, you know that you I would need? be okay with if we make fun of it. So you, you know what you need a clip? You need a clip that scene from Vampires with uh, John Carpenter's Vampires with James Woods. And he's explaining <laughs> vampires to the preacher. 
<laughs> they're not a bunch of faggots running around in gay but rented porno wear. He said they would literally <laughs> bend you over and bite you in the ass and fuck you with the steak. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that 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 whole movie is good. Um we got Katie Cassidy playing Chris Fowles in this. Uh stand in for Tina, Nancy's friend. Uh she was in the Black Christmas remake that we've already covered this season. Mm -hmm. Uh When a Stranger Calls from 2006, same year as Black Christmas. Of course she was in Supernatural. Uh she played Ruby, correct? One of that? the Rubies, wasn't she? One of the yeah, the first one. The first, yeah. Uh, she is, of course, in Arrow. She played Laurel Lance in that <sighs> and went on to play the same character pretty much in Legends of Tomorrow, Vixen, and The Flash, so a lot of CW, uh, DC stuff. Yeah, wasn't she, like, one of the birds or something? Yeah, she was supposed to be Black Canary, yeah. but they fucked her story up. So in Arrow, bad. And then, then, then they killed her, and then they retconned her from another unit. It, it was a whole fucking thing. It was a it. mess. <laughs> Did you ever watch the Arrow series at all? Yep. Uh, I watched all of it. Unfortunately, I didn't watch all of it. I think I think season five is where I I tapped out. Uh, second season should have been where everybody tapped out, but Ugh. anyways, that um, yeah. Thomas Decker plays Jesse Braun, uh, the stand-in for Rod, Chris's ex uh, boyfriend in this. Uh, all about he's he was in All About Evil, uh, Elvira's movie Macabre, uh, Terminator, the Sarah Connor Chronicles. Was that any uh, good? We, no. Okay. <laughs> I watch. I think, I think I would try to watch like the first season and go like halfway through it, and I was like, "Ugh." I've heard mixed things about it, but that series that series of movies is so shit in parts <laughs> that I think people went back and said, "Well, the Sarah Connor Chronicles wasn't as bad as uh, Genesis." I'm like, "That's not saying shit, dude." Yeah. I don't know what you what. <laughs> you set the bar really low using that example. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, we have Connie Britton playing Dr. Gwen Holbrook, uh, Nancy's, Nancy's mom, hot mom. And a psychologist. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the the mom from American Horror Story Murder House. Uh, yeah, that what's his name decided to cheat on fucking dumbass. Yeah, with a with a crone with one eye. But to be fair, he didn't see her that way. So. Yes. <laughs> Uh, she was in. She's been in American Ultra, the Nashville TV series, which is hilarious, given the fact that the original Nancy's mom in the very first uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, her well, she was in the movie version of Nashville that the TV show was based off of. So, like, however many years removed, the moms uh, to Nancy in both these films were were involved with Nashville for some reason. Wow! Uh, and and then White Lotus recently. She she was pretty good in that that show. Uh, and then Aaron Yu rounds out the cast. He plays Marcus Yon, uh, uncredited. He is the former preschool classmate of Nancy, and he recorded his demise. Yes, and it got posted <laughs> post-mortem. Yeah, somehow. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I don't think I'd be posting that for my daughter if I saw something like that, but, it, you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, synopsis. Years after a child molester, and he is a full-on child molester in this movie, was burned alive by a vigilante mob of grieving, grieving parents. The, child, the children who were abused are dying off one by one. Each one is being visited in their nightmares by a horribly burned man with a red and green sweater and a ratty fedora. <laughs> Did the parents kill an innocent man? The answer to that is no, he, he was terrible. <laughs> and is is his vengeful spirit in that exacting revenge upon the teenagers of Springwood, Ohio? Uh, yes, he is. Uh, Micronaps are a real thing. The horrors of the past are brought into the present. And this Freddy is the scummiest slasher we will ever cover, full stop. That's the end on that. Welcome to your new nightmare. <laughs> the micronaps. I just, I just had a micronap. No, you didn't. <laughs> Shut up. It was a micronap. It, in my world, that was a micronap. <laughs> uh, but the micro naps that they're referring to in this is like you're, you've you been awake for so long that you fade in and out of like sleep that you don't even realize is sleep. That's, yeah. that's what they're referring to. Mm. <clears throat> Body count in this is five. Um, uh, it's it's a nightmare film. They don't really get that high. The counts on these movies. Yeah. Uh, seven, and, seven are not counted. Uh, so the ones we do count are Dean Russell, who has his throat cut open uh, deep with a knife uh, that he does to himself, seemingly. Oh, that was uh, a cool Chris, scene. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Chris Fowles is thrown around the room and then slashed in the chest, uh, i.e. the original Tina. She kind of had that kind of death. Uh, Jesse Braun is impaled through the back with finger knives. Uh, Freddy Krueger is burned to death in a fire in a flashback and dream. 
And then Gwen Holbrook is stabbed through the back of the head and out the eyes. Um, not counting this as Freddy Krueger in the final part of the film because he does have his throat slit with a paper trimmer, but he disappears near the end of the movie because they were setting up a, tr- a trilogy, actually, before they realized the backlash and then <laughs> put the kibosh on that. And then finally, Marcus uh, has his head smashed in his computer uh, at some point, but that's deemed unlikely as a possible death in the film by the people who uh, determine that on Dead Meat uh, Wiki. So there you go. Okay. Quotes for the film uh, from Freddy Krueger uh, while Nancy is screaming, oh, that's music to my ears. And then Nancy struggling, I want to wake up. And then Freddy, you can't wake up. I had to keep you awake long enough so that when you finally slept, you'd never wake up again. We're going to be in here a long time. Do you really think your boyfriend could wake you up? And then he puts his claws on her chest. I'm your boyfriend now, which is really bad given the context of this movie. Oh, yeah, because that was his favorite girl, wasn't it? (laughs) Yes, that's the one that he went to the most and abused the most. Freddy Krueger to Jesse. Did you know that after the heart stops beating, the brain can function for well over seven minutes? Pause. And then he says, we've got six more minutes to play. That's one of the most evil lines in any movie that i've heard honestly given the context like yeah the guy can't escape his body is dying but he can be tortured for six more minutes by freddy yeah evil (laughs) freddy krueger where nancy falls into a pool of blood how's this for a wet dream i mean he pulled it from (laughs) he pulled it from one of the movies but it's so disgusting giving how perverted he's being yes it's it's worse because Robert England's they cut out the backstory that he was a pedophile. He just killed the kids. He didn't do the other stuff. And when he said it, it was like, okay, that's kind of a clever, you know, thing to say, but no, it's, and he said it to guys too. Like, I mean, I I think think he said it to the, the character, uh, and from dream warriors, the one that survived, the one that was all horny all the time that went into the waterbed and part. Oh yeah. Uh, Another one from Freddie. Why are you screaming? I haven't even cut you yet. <laughs> That's actually a pretty good line yeah. from the movie. Uh, Freddie Krueger again. Your mouth says no, moving his claw no. up Nancy's leg, but your body says yes. I can't. I didn't <laughs> like it at all. Uh, Quentin Smith, look, we're running out of time. Nancy, what do you mean? Uh, Quentin reading a book. But then it says at the 70-hour mark, the insomniac will begin to experience micronaps. His brain will begin to shut down its functions for several seconds in an attempt to recharge itself, which basically means you're dreaming, but you don't know it. Like, even if you're awake, and then it says after that, your brain will shut down, including inducing a coma, which is permanent sleep. Uh, and I put that in there, even though it's longer, because that's the gist of this movie. Like, they, no matter how much they try to stay awake, they can never escape him because they will start going into micro naps yeah. eventually. Is that a real scientific <clears throat> thing? I think it's based on real stuff because your your mind does start taking. Like, I mean, I've had it happen. Like, on less sleep than they were going on in this movie. Like, I'll be sitting there thinking I'm awake, and then like all of a sudden I'll snap too, and it's like I dreamed that I was, and and I still was like in wherever I was sitting at in the dream world, but like my brain was like, just, you know, trying to, it's usually when I've got like high sugar that it does that to be honest. But still, Yeah. Calling the BDs police. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was uh, Kayla and I on Pirates of the Caribbean and it's a small world because the rides are so slow. They're so comforting. They're so relaxing. You're out of the sun and we were drunk and high. So we took micro naps. <laughs> How high? That high. <laughs> uh, Chris Fowles sees picture of Dean's grave. You knew Dean that far back. Uh, and then, um, Jesus, that is me. But I don't know how I'm in that picture. I didn't mean Dean until high school. I include that for a couple of reasons. It's kind of weird. that I mean, it points out in the movie that these kids are so traumatized that they have totally, like, blacked out part of their childhood oh yeah which is is a real thing enough to the Uh, point where they think he's fucking innocent yeah Uh, but the other thing i find funny about this is she talks about she didn't know dean and you know given supernatural and her i thought that was kind of a funny little thing shut up (laughs) i didn't even think about that i fucking hate dean uh nancy and then finally nancy holbrook cuts off freddie's hand it hurts now doesn't it that's because you're in my world now bitch that was a good that was a good quote yeah, I, I like the bitch part she added on. That that kind of tapped it into the original. 
visually, this movie's fucking stunning. Mm -hmm. I've got to give them credit for that. The scenes where they go into the dreams and all the stuff's floating around oh, yeah. is, is so good. Like, I mean, there's ash in one scene. It's kind of snowing in another. Like, And then the, the, the coloring that they used in a lot of scenes, like amber, like coloring in some, and like it's kind of greenish gray and like others. It, they did a really good job in the visual department. Yeah, uh, the, I like the blues. I also kind of liked his movement in, in the dream world. Well, obviously it was the dream world because he was there. But I kind of yeah. liked uh, the fast, rapid movements. It was creepy enough, you know. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was far scarier than anything Robert did. But, like, Robert Robert was playing with victims in a sense. Yes. And this, this Freddy was more about, like, he wanted directly to move in and do whatever he was yeah, going to do. Except was, for Nancy, but for other reasons. Yeah, well, he was very <laughs> menacing in this film. Versus Robert England. I swear to God, one time we've seen him, like, kind of creeping around in that funny tiptoe <laughs> way, trying to get to his next victim. It's like, ah! You know, like, what the fuck, dude? He did that. In, uh, I want to say it was the Dream Warriors, the guy with the bad hearing. He, he was wearing the hearing Oh, yeah. Aid. I think and, he did it at the video game one, too, or something. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, the video game, he did something like that. That was part, yeah, part six. He's sitting there, and he even looks at the camera, I think, and, like, blows on his finger or, or like, or puts his finger up to his lips. Oh, like, yeah. Don't tell him that I'm here, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> and, and I loved it. I'm not talking shit, but it was a far difference from what we saw with Robert England versus, you know, Jackie. Well, speaking of that comparison, what do you all think about the visual effects of Freddy's burnt face versus what he originally did? A lot of people at, talk shit about it, but I think it's kind of creepy and effective because it looked like somebody's face after what, that would have been melted yes. down. Yes, and I respect it. Um, I, I wasn't disappointed. It looked like an actual burn victim. Like, I, you've seen burn victims before. I was, you know, I was just kind of shocked the amount of people that hated it because I'm, I'm – well, we'll get to there, but right now we're talking about things specifically. No, I, I know that, but it, it's shocking because when you watch the first Freddy, that is a legit horror movie. Mm -hmm. And that's what this movie brought back was being a legit horror movie again. Wouldn't you say, though, that New Nightmare was also a legit horror movie? That's what I'm saying, though. Yeah. New Nightmare brung back. Oh, you're talking about the last. The Rob, one before this one. The last yes. Robert England one. Yeah. Yeah, but because that wasn't the last one. Freddy vs. Jason was the last yeah, one. Yeah, technically. We're not counting that, though. We're including that in. Uh, uh, Jason Friday. Yeah. yeah. Next Friday. The 13th. Yeah. The new nightmare. You could say that that was a legit horror movie, but this brought it back to that. Cause the whole yeah. idea of Jason is gritty. It's gritty. It's nasty. It's dirty. And this movie really nailed the, bringing that idea back and, and bring it into a, the mindset of it. Yeah. Um, trying to think of other visuals in this uh, mainly I was just, I mean, I, the lighting, for instance, I love the lighting in this movie because it's very dark, except where it needed oh, yeah. to be lit, and it kind of gave you like almost the claustrophobic. It almost had that that feeling like when you're tr when you're going to sleep and your brain starts like blacking out, oh, like everything, yeah. but what's immediately in front of you, you know, that sort of thing. It had that going on for it in a it, lot of cases. It looked really good because it looked like the good. The one thing I liked about this one. And it worked for the for the previous Nightmare on Elm Street film, a Nightmare on Elm Street films. But what I liked about this one is the dream sequence. You didn't quite know it was a dream. Uh, for instance, when uh, it, uh, Tina goes outside and she's calling for her dog, it, it it's lit up enough that you know it, it's it's dark outside, so you can see what's going on with her. You can't really see what she's looking for at first. You know she's looking for her dog. That's it. But also, I think that the lighting and the way that it was filmed just made it look like it's really midnight. It's fucking cold outside. You know, you could feel mm -hmm. it. That's how good it was. Yeah, and it and it carried that through. Even I think you're, well, it was the Tina stand in. Chris is the one you were talking about. But oh, like. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's easy to get the names mixed up. Tomato, cause... potato. <laughs> yeah, uh, but following her through to where she went up in the attic and she started, like, going through the trunk or whatever and yeah. started seeing, like, the, the history of her being at the preschool, like, that was part of a dream, too, because she gets attacked by Freddy yeah. when she wakes up. So, but, I mean, the only thing that really hinted at that was that it was a little bit, like I said, dark around the edges. Like, mm -hmm. there really wasn't uh, any, and, and that kind of ties into the micro nap theory of the movie, too. So. yeah. No, I think visually this movie fucking killed it. It was off the charts. Amazing. Um, Story-wise, I felt like it was fairly simple, story-wise. I mean, it's not going to hold a candle to Wes Craven's New <clears throat> Nightmare, story-wise, of course. I don't even know if it held a candle to the original, though, when it came to story, because I feel like this one, it's just, it, it's the same story, but just 
they made him the yeah the, you know they they went the extra route and made him the molester in this one yeah i think the hardest part about that is that the empire that robert england built was that you know yeah he was going to hurt the kids but he wasn't going to hurt the kids and i yeah. don't know that that's better you're talking about killing a kid but molesting i guess it makes it more more um I guess it gives more of a aggression to the parents because it's one thing to kill your kid, but to molest your kid and then kill them is there's there's a hotter fire that burns for that. It, it just it just well, is. That's the thing though. He didn't murder any of the kids back in the day before they killed him. He was just molesting oh, them. Oh, he was which, just. Ew. And then he started killing them after he was yeah, killed. That's true. Like okay, it's, you know, he was the ghost coming back. Okay, I I I fucked up that part. Uh, but no, I mean, I totally understand what you're talking about. Yeah. It just, in my opinion, mm -hmm. it's, it's still, I mean, because in my mind and they don't establish this in the movie, so it could be, that could just be, you know, something else entirely. You think about the old Freddy, he would kill them. And not only that, but their souls couldn't go on to the afterlife oh, because yeah. he was collecting their souls. This fucking Freddy, if he does that. Those kids are being molested. For, oh yeah, you know eternity. That's way worse than just being held, you know, and and kept away from your, you know, afterlife. Yeah, I mean, that that's that's torture on a whole new level with this Freddy. If that's the case, I they don't establish that. But, yeah. Ugh. And then um, we we just don't want to we don't want to imagine our Freddy like that. We're cool with him being a kid killer. We are not at all cool with him being a fucking child molester. Well, it's funny if you look at that. It was more it was more worse off to be a pedophile than it was a murder kid. I know. It is. It's like it's a, it's a it, hard It's it's but the feelings worse. I don't care how you I mean you can argue it one way or the other the kid's still around, but it's just there there's something innate in me that I feel like one's worse than the other. I mean, it it's just is. Like, I mean, it and the fact that he's coming back and like that that whole scene where he tells the kid, We've got our six more minutes to play or whatever, knowing that he's a fucking child molester, what did he do to that guy? I mean, because he didn't discriminate boys or girls yeah. when he molested. So He was it, an equal opportunity molester. Uh it's it's, <laughs> it's 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 I mean it, don't get me wrong like I mean it's dark and it and it's it's so gross but it makes him a legit like serious bad guy for a movie like okay. I mean it really amps up the the threat level for him. I know how to put a positive spin on this. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> if you would have put a wig and lipstick on Freddy, Stop it, it would have made a fine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, it's funny because uh, Robert England said if he came back, he wanted to play a female. And and uh, he wanted if he comes back, he doesn't want to be Freddy. Yeah, he wants to be a regular person, but he wants to be in drag for some reason. I don't know why that is. It but is that's what he drag. Has Wait, said. he's tried. I swear, I saw a weird ass movie with him where he was technically in drag. Well, he was in Dream Warriors. He he because there was that scene where oh, he transitions yeah. from the hot nurse. Well, yeah, and, we know that. Yeah. But <laughs> the hot nurse. <laughs> But I can't. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't figure out why, for the life of me, that like he's. It's just like, really, Robert. Why do you want to be a female character? Like, why? Why does? Why that would you, you even say that? Like, dude, <laughs> don't ruin your legacy. Shut your mouth, dude. Oh my god. Uh, speaking of ruining the legacy, I just told uh, Reverend earlier this morning that I ruined Freddy Krueger for the kids because while they were imagining him as this amazing, scary, creepy character, they found out watching uh, <laughs> watching a new nightmare that he was actually a nice guy. Like, he, in real life, he's a really nice guy. And they're like, they didn't like that story at all. <laughs> they're actors. That's, that's, that's the whole idea. You're, they're, the actor's supposed to sell you that the role he's playing is yeah. real. That's but, how you know yeah. you're watching a good actor. Well, they wanted him to be an asshole in real life, apparently. So <laughs> <laughs> We need a legitimate reason to yeah. hate this guy. He's way too nice. Uh, like, oh, he's nice? The fuck. Well, that, that's one of the things that kills me about the new call for, like, you can only play a part if you are that thing. Like, if it's a handicapped person in the yeah. movie, you can only be... At, like, where's the acting come in at that point? You're just saying that people need to play themselves, and that makes no sense yeah. to me whatsoever. <laughs> I really am narcissistic like this. <laughs> Not that. But then what's your, what's your ability to play roles? If all you can do is just be who you, you are. You don't have any kind of range. Yeah. yeah, there's no range. So you're just supposed to play this role only? 
Oh my god! Like, like my favorite meme uh, ever is probably uh, some. It was like a thread that somebody came up with. They said, "Imagine this: suddenly you're there doing your normal stuff that you do, and somebody calls cut from off screen, and you and and you realize that you were Gary Oldman being playing your part the entire time." Oh I'm my like, god! That's legit because Gary Oldman can play fucking anything. Uh, but, but yeah, that, okay. So let's take the perspective <laughs> that you can only play the roles that that mirrors who you are. Okay. So how many action, if you're handicapped, that, that means you can never be really an action star. Uh, well, what they would do, and, and this is the one little bit of kind of woke shit that they put in the new Spider-Man movie, as bad as I hate to say it. There is a spider character who is in a wheelchair and the wheelchair has like bionic abilities or something like that but that you could they would say you could play a character like that or something that's retarded i, I don't I, I agree with you i'm not arguing for it but i'm just like okay well that's the other flip is there is also a retarded spider-man <laughs> i know where he shoots his web from it ain't from his hands <laughs> ew i like pizza steve <laughs> gross uh, what do we think about the acting in this movie? I thought it was, except for the final girl, I thought that the acting was good. I did not like the final girl's like acting in this movie. Well, it was like well, like what I had said earlier, and I'm going to repeat it. Rooney Mara played Rooney Mara. Yeah, well, and she also it was like you you talk about these people sometimes in movies that like have no screen presence. Like mm-hmm. she she had none. Like. Mm-mm. If it wasn't for Cal Gallner being around the entire time that she's on screen, I'm like, I wouldn't have anything to watch when she's on screen, really. I mean. It's what, like that office meme where Dwight is just standing there minding his business and then his and fucking. Yeah, up. she just always like, ugh. Like, she's just there. <laughs> but what, what was the guy's name again? The guy that played Freddy? Oh, Jackie. Uh, Jackie O'Haley, yeah. He is the one that sells the entire movie. Oh, he does. He, he does. He, he, he's the best in the movie, yeah. yeah well, he's sure. just a good actor, period. And he really just. Whatever role you put him in, he just seems to shine. Well, not only that, is that he gave us the ick that this film intended to give us. Yeah, we the did not, grittiness. Yeah, we did not. Well, the grittiness is fine. We wanted that. I know, I, but you need an actor to sell the grittiness. Yeah, the he sold the, the molestation. Uh, he looked like he enjoyed his role. You know, in terms of, the, and granted, he was working with adults, so he wasn't the, working with the, children. Listen, the fact that the man is five foot six and he's still menacing in this movie. Yeah, so I, didn't, I did not know that. I thought he was hella tall. No, he is super, super short. And like, but they fucking he, have him on stilts or fucking. <laughs> they, they, in fact, they did have like a lo- longer, like size boots and stuff. He was actually shorter than all the female cast. They had to like <gasps> elevate him. F- how do you? Okay, whatever. <laughs> I mean, like, but you don't have to, to show be. You how, but think that about. Goes to, Think think about Watchmen. How aggressive and more of a dominant figure he was in most of the other Watchmen. I didn't. In the movie. I didn't watch Watchmen. Oh what? Yeah, I only watched like the first one with you, and even then I was like in There's and out. Only I was one taking Watchmen. micro naps. <laughs> what? There's only one Watchmen. Okay, movie. my bad. You said all the Watchmen. I thought you meant there was more than no, one movie. All the Watchmen. Yeah, like, and that one that I watched with you, I was in and out of consciousness. Like that that <laughs> scene where they're talking about Warshak dropping a guy down the elevator shaft. Like Don't remember. that nails the character. Like at the intensity that that yeah he might be small but this guy's gonna pack a giant punch. That's that's what I'm saying though. Like the fact that he's that menacing in this movie and he is that short of an actor like goes to show you how good he is. Yeah, Robert um, England was five ten, so he did have <laughs> big shoes to fill. I did not know this guy was so short. That is so fucking funny. I mean, more kudos to him. We from the get go from the start of this podcast we did not complain. Like we have not complained about Jackie yet. I, and I won't because yeah, he's the best part of this movie. He is. Like, I mean, he was. I could, and I and my biggest pet peeve of this movie is the best actress in the movie. I feel like is Katie Casty, and she, she should have been the lead. She like, she was the, a yeah side Ro- bitch. Ro- 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 Rooney Mara should have been, uh, or however her name is, should have been the 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 side character, the character that that Chris is in the movie. Yeah, uh, at best. Yeah, or just not uh, been in the film at all. Well, there's that. I mean, <laughs> I don't look at. I don't dislike Rooney Mara. I think there's roles that suit her. This role did not suit her. No, because you have to have a force. Of, I mean, especially and I and I know you can't compare, but you take Heather Langenkamp. You take the final girl that she was, the force of presence yeah. that she was. 
Rooney Mara couldn't project that in this movie. And mm-hmm. it, it just, I mean, that's fine. Maybe the ad, maybe the director didn't get that out of her. Sometimes that's the case, but he got, he got more than enough out of Jackie Earl Haley. So it clearly there was, I mean, he wasn't terrible at directing people. I mean, yeah, <clears throat> but maybe Jackie was just like Robert. He didn't need directing. Yeah, well, I, sometimes you can't make crap all out of turd polish. <laughs> that's again, true. Again, again, Rooney Mara is a good actress, but she played Rooney Mara, and we didn't need well, that. We needed Nancy in this film. If you take the other actors and actresses, Kyle, you take Kyle. Cassidy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> don't. don't uh, you say that, and that just reminds me of uh, Aquafina's like rap. That oh she did God. On the new, uh, Little Mermaid. That is the most awful thing I've ever heard in my life. (laughs) I'm glad she's getting so much fucking. I hear that she's funny as a fucking. uh, I hear she's funny as a like a comedian. Like everyone's like her. Her comedic shows are pretty good, but the fuck the she sounds like Yoko Ono's daughter. (laughs) She sounds worse than that. Yeah, I don't plan on seeing that movie. Yeah, yeah, I don't Uh, think. Yeah. But anyways, I, I just feel like it's bad when your final girl, the one that you're resting the movie upon, and along with the slasher, is kind of a wet paper bag. You yeah. Know, like as far as like, you know, uh, music. The music wasn't bad in this. It still wasn't the classic, no. you know, standout of the original, but it wasn't bad. It, it um, suited the I scenes, didn't... so, and I have no complaints about it. D- did Wes Craven have any involvement? No, in... he was dead, wasn't he? Uh, I don't think he I, was. No, I don't think he was in 2010 because he did come back and do. When was oh, uh, Scream Four? Never mind. He, he, he did Scream Four. I'm just curious if he. Had oh, any never mind. He passed in 2015. I heard that he had nothing to do with this, and they said that that was kind of rude. <laughs> I I don't think he had much to do with this because I think that Platinum Dunes like pretty much took this over and ran with it. I mean, they did, but they did a good job without his involvement. They still, I think, they still nailed the movie. Yeah, I I mean, they were going for a different thing, and I and you can't really blame them because anybody, if they would have done the same thing exactly, then you would have had the situation with like uh, Vince Vaughn and Psycho, the shot for shot remake with somebody who is subpar, like you know how Vince Vaughn was subpar to Anthony Perkins. Jack Earl Haley, if he was doing an exact imitation of Robert England, would have been a pale comparison. I mean, I'm not saying he couldn't have pulled it off, but nobody wanted that. They wanted something different out of him. So, um, you know what? I always had an idea. I'm trying to think of the guy's name. He's he. I, I don't know if he was the director of the original Hairspray. That skinny gay dude, um, John Waters. He would have been an awesome Norman Bates. He probably would have, yes. He has that vibe to him. <clears throat> yeah, now, now he's a good actor. I think he could have sold that role and did a really good job of just nailing it. Well, I, I brought this up to Raina. What do you think about this? Um, wh- what do you think about Devin Sawa as, like, Freddy? Because he's put his his interest out there in playing the part going forward. You got to jog my memory who Devin Sawa is. Um, he is, okay, he has been in Idle Hands. He was a lead, a male lead in Final Destination. Hold on, Idle Hands. What what what, what character do you play in Idle Hands? He uh, was the one that lost his hand. Oh, okay, no. okay. Him as Freddy? He's yeah. older now. I gotta see He's a older picture. Now. Okay. Is he jacked or is he just like a kind of? He, this is probably a better picture of him, but he's older than that, even more now. He's like our age. And uh he's got a lot of horror. Now, don't think about his face though. You uh, got to yeah, think yeah, about yeah. makeup. I know. Freddy Krueger, he's got a lot of horror under his belt. See, I but I haven't seen him in a movie recently. What's, like, the most recent movie he's done? Uh, God, he hasn't. Um, oh, wait, I take that back. Uh, I don't, I've never seen this movie. Gasoline Alley, 2022. That was the last movie that Bruce Willis did before oh, yeah, I don't know he if really I want to watch turned. That. Yeah, uh, they, they kind of just propped him up on a stick and... Well, and they, yeah, and they had like a, a thing in his ear and then told him the lines because yeah. he couldn't even remember his lines at that point. It's kind of sad what's going on with Bruce Willis. Yeah, he but. was in uh, Hunter Hunter in 2020, Escape the Plan, The Extractors, uh, Black Friday. He was in Black Friday? Oh, he was in that, yes. He would have been a the good character. No. What? No, I'm just saying he would have been good as that Black Friday character, the guy with the he axe. Was in Black Friday. I don't know who he played. It's not though. the one with Bruce Willis, is it? No. No, no Black Friday's the one with uh Bruce Campbell Bruce where they Campbell, fight that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zombies yeah. Or yeah yes, yes, yes. He was Devin Saw Devin Saw was the main character in that the one that's like the older guy that comes into work and, and 
Yeah. Uh, the older guy that's dating the younger chick. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. I didn't, know, I didn't that know that was him. I didn't know it was him either. Oh, yeah. my God. His movies are out of order by date, so I'm trying to see. Yeah, I actually liked the movie with Bruce Campbell. Yeah, that was that was I, it. We we enjoyed that movie. Yeah, I. Uh, but what do you think? Do you think that I I, I think he could play Freddy? I honestly could. I, think I he mean, could. it it is there talk about him trying to pull it off? He put it out there that he's interested. Because Robert England came out, we'll discuss this toward <clears throat> the end. Out of the closet, and he said, wants to be a and, woman. <laughs> well, besides that, he said that he will not play Freddy again just to squash everybody's dreams because everybody's talking about how the Duffer brothers are making a new oh, yeah. uh, I mean, Friday or I mean Nightmare on M Street. And he wanted everybody to know that he would not be playing Freddy in that, but he had ideas of how they should go forward with See, the series. You know what would be badass because the way modern <clears throat> uh, TV shows are now, they're actually legit. They're legit shows that have an awesome story arc and you have room for character development. They should set the ground for a Nightmare on Elm Street series done like legit, like on an HBO or Showtime or even Netflix. Even Netflix, it yeah. Yeah, and then you could build the story of Freddy. I think everyone's afraid get... of Netflix taking over because after what happened with Texas Chainsaw. Yeah, that's I'm, true. But I'm talking about an actual series where it gives, yeah. you, it gives you room to develop the character so you watch him like turning into this horrible person and then the, the, then the, the apex when it happens and then you can roll into him. And then the next re- season could be him fucking killing people. Yeah, slowly creeping into the minds of everybody. I think that would be an awesome show. Each episode, someone's fucking dying. Yeah, I mean, he could go through, and uh, it could show, like, each individual episode could be, like, one of the kids on uh, Elm Street, uh, you know, yeah. dealing with Freddy, and then, like, you know, and, and until it gets to Nancy, and then, you know, start that whole thing over or or not yeah we'll get into how, what what he said his ideas were and whether or not we think those are good ideas but um, i think i think that's some of the best things about modern television they're so good now about writing an amazing story because you have time to write the story you're not trying to rush a lot of stuff you're building a, a complex profile of everything uh, it there's in. still they, some people still manage to fuck it up real good yeah real but there's good. also people that execute it amazingly <laughs> yeah. It's not just oh. a, it's not, yeah, you might have like a, like 60 to 7% failure rate, but that 30% that nails it, it's amazing when they nail it. Uh, I'd actually like to request a moment of silence for the Winchesters. Okay, anyways, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, that's a reference to the fact that uh, her uh, Jensen Ackles, who she's not uh, a fan of as a person, uh, tried to revive uh, Supernatural and a, and a prequel spinoff, oh, yeah. and it failed horribly. So she and then got the fans it. to try to rally behind it, but they didn't. Uh, wrong. <laughs> uh, Before we go into trivia, I just want to say about this movie: I'm torn on this movie because I am too. it it is a good movie. It legit is. It doesn't deserve the hate that it got. But it inevitably does draw the you know the comparison back to the originals, and it, it it's it's just hard whenever you've got that comparison going on. Like, yeah. I mean, it's it, it shouldn't have that. It, it should totally stand on its own. And but and I'll give it credit for being good at what it does. But whenever you've got this version of Freddy, he doesn't have like the personality to kind of latch on to because they were going a different route yeah. and they did great with what they did. It's just, you you know, you're sitting there and you're like, I don't know how to feel about this. Well, they didn't you want know? him to have the personality, which is kind of sucks for Jackie because it sounds like he was going for it. Um, I know we'll get into it when we get into the Death Holler Awards. I'm sure we have our own favorite deaths because I know that I feel like your death that you liked wasn't the same as mine. I don't know what my hubby's favorite death was. So we'll get into that later. But... Um, I can say, even if we have our own favorite deaths, I don't feel like the deaths stacked up very well compared to what we've seen in the past. Um, it really was just Jackie kind of carrying the weight of the film on his shoulders. Uh, even and, more and, and so and the w- fear, not so much the death scenes, but more of the fear and the dread he was bringing upon the people he was torturing. And a lot of the movie was thrown upon Katie Cassidy, even though she's not yeah. even in this movie. It's really weird because you're following her. She's doing all the legwork to yeah. figure out what the hell's going on. And then Rooney Mara is just, it's thrown in her lap and it's like, you're the final girl. And it's like, where the fuck did this come what? from? Uh, and poor good boy Skeeter, you know? 
there is a rut row warning for this movie. Oh, all yeah. of it is off screen. So there you go. Kind of this bad. show. You know the the scene with him laying there uh, as uh, he's dead. He actually is indeed like it's the real dog. He's just laying there getting visual cues to be told to stay. That's how good of a boy he is. Uh, I saw this recently as a meme. This is a tangent, mm. but did you know that they have to CGI out dogs' tails whenever they're in movies? Because oh, yeah. when they're doing such a good job, their tails are wagging yes. when they're supposed to be like straight, when they're supposed to be menacing. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't aware they did that. Yeah, yeah because it's, they, it's it, of, like even though they're growling, their tails are still wagging. So because they, <laughs> they know they're doing a good job, and they know that they're making everybody happy by doing the good job. Oh, I want to. I want to be a dog trainer. Trainer. <laughs> Um, but I'll, I'll give you this, Noah, because I, I know you were, uh, you're, you're, you like this movie quite a bit. Um, I, I do like this film. Like I didn't think I would. And, uh, with all the hate today, and I think the hate's unjustified for it. It's just, it's a different movie and it's hard to wrap your head around when you're yeah. used to everything else. I will say this. Um, I do not hate the film. Absolutely do not hate it. Um, but I also expected to like it more cause uh, my husband did and I, we don't like the same things and that's okay. I think that's why we work as a couple, but um, I think I thought I was going to like it more. So I think my, my expectations were set a little higher. Um, and I will say there, uh, uh, after watching it, the reality is just a little bit lower, which is not, it's still not bad. I'll put it this way because it's platinum dunes. It's, uh, another remake that they did. And if you, I was comparing this to the original nightmare versus <clears throat> Texas chainsaw versus the original on that. I think they did a better job with this one. Yeah. I, yeah, I do. definitely. I, I see what they were, where they were trying to go with the more menacing Freddy. Like, believe us, I do. I just, I really don't like the molestation part. I think they, they could have done well without that. Well, it's the thing is, is when you're watching a slasher, the tendency is, and I, and it shouldn't be there. I don't know why this is a thing, but it became a thing. You want to root for the slasher at some point. I mean, oh, you know, yeah. Jason and Freddie <laughs> and Chucky, they all became icons and people were rooting for them yeah. when you, you really shouldn't. I mean, don't get me wrong, <laughs> but, but. You can't root for this, Freddie. You Mm-mm. cannot. If you do, I don't know what. God help you. I don't know what. You're fucked up. Get I him, Freddie. You really are. Get her <laughs> in her asshole. <laughs> um, could you imagine if it was this Freddie that was up where uh, during the talk show, like just throwing his hands oh, up in the no. air and everyone's cheering mm-hmm. for him? <laughs> Freddie, Freddie. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's not going to happen. But you didn't share your thoughts on it completely, so go ahead, Noah. Tell us what you think about it. I think I have more of a different opinion. I, the whole child molestation that the movie does doesn't bother me because that's more reality, and the and the reaction from the parents I think is more reality. Like you, you're so you're sold a bill of goods that people are reasonable, and I find people to be very unreasonable. So to have the child molested thing dragged into the movie and the reaction from the parents is more tangible. To me, and not that too, but in the original Friday the Third, I mean the Nightmare on Elm Street series, they never one hundred percent didn't commit to saying Robert England didn't touch the kids. They left it super. No, they didn't. Yeah, so it, it's fair. super ambiguous. And I think back in the eighties, it would have been a little more, a little too much of a taboo to commit a character to being like that. He and wouldn't it, be as loved as he is today. That's, that's for sure. That's well, I don't know, but the way they treat people that act like that's a little weird nowadays well, but he wasn't wearing a wig and well, and, and lipstick so but, but i'm just saying though it, it's <laughs> and he didn't it, identify as, yeah but we'll leave that alone but but it's <laughs> it's it was ambiguous for the the original series they never really committed to saying he didn't do it or he did do it but I, and he clearly he had like okay because these kids were teenagers we're talking about the original freddy uh, he he was very pervy with them boys are he girls. was very sexual oh yes. yeah so, <laughs> oh, the fucking tongue. The goddamn tongue. <laughs> the Freddy tongue that won't leave. Yeah. Um, I, I, I mean, I don't disagree with you. I think that the parents in both versions were justified. I mean, you talk about this child killer in the original, I mean, with hints that he was a molester, but they never outright said it, uh, gets off on a technicality, and he's going to walk scot-free. 
I mean, you know, vigilante justice is a thing. It happens. Uh, but you can understand the motivation more of the parents in this film, which goes back to the whole entire thing. I don't know why it is, why in a gut reaction that the molestation is worse than the killing, but it is. Like, it just feels worse. Yeah, you know, like, it does. You know what the biggest thing? Like, the whole the whole original series, it's more tangible. Because the 80s is, was a totally different era where I think vigilante <clears throat> justice would have been accepted oh, yeah. highly in that a condition. You'd be like, oh, yeah, you killed this guy? Yeah, that, I don't. we don't know who did it. It's case closed, you know, move on. Nowadays, it would have been different. If that guy had did what he had did in reality and there was vigilante justice, they would have went after every single parent Yeah, with the full extent of the law. Uh, they Yeah, they probably would. Well, it depends on the town because <clears throat> if you get a small enough community, then the local sheriff will just look the other way and say and just wipe his hands of it. No, out out, out no, here, no. you would get people that would be like, well, it's the right thing to do, but that doesn't mean you should do it. Like, it's oh, call the that. police, you it's, know? It's not, it's not even that. You get some, how can you judge him? That's just how he, that's just how he views it. And I don't think it – there are some wild people that say some wild shit for wild justifications. I'm just saying, in my neck of the woods, you could probably still get by with that. I'm just throwing it out. What are they called? I Maps, mean... minor, attractive person. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's not like that. But there, even in your neck of the woods, there'd be somebody from somewhere around the U.S. that would go out there and and do the investigation to try to pin these people down that did it. I, well, they probably you know. would, but I'm just throwing this out there yeah. just so you know the makeup of the community. They have to send when they send in state police to most of the areas of southeastern Kentucky. They have to choose somebody who's from the actual area that they're sending it to oh, yeah. because they know that the community will, uh, you know, just bulk up and will not talk sh to anybody yeah. because you know mm -hmm. you're outsider. You have no business in our doing. So get the fuck out. You yeah, know? that's that's got to be fucking wild. <laughs> It's out here, clannish. out Not here, the they clan, just won't. But, you know. <laughs> out here, if it happens a millimeter outside of their jurisdiction, they're like, "That's not our fucking problem." Oh, you're bleeding. Oh, here's the phone number. <laughs> we'll use your blood to write it on the on the ground here, on the right side of your jurisdiction, of course, not ours. Yeah, I don't know. Something about it I can never wrap my head around. If the evidence is overwhelming and someone gets murdered because they're going to get off, I. Don't see how that's a bad thing. No, we don't. But I mean, that's what being reasonable is. So, yeah. And like you said, <laughs> people are not reasonable. No, they're not. Anyways, uh, but I, I don't. I mean, we both I think enjoyed this film for what it was. It's just it's it's a hard one to justify. Like versus the originals, that's the only thing that I can throw out there. It's not a terrible movie though, and it didn't deserve the hate that it got at all. Well, you know I'm what fucking of... blows is I saw this movie almost immediately after I saw, uh, what do you call it? Um, the uh, new, new nightmare. nightmare. And then I'm yeah, like, that, and immediately, same for me. yeah, <laughs> same for and immediately me. I've picked in my head and my heart. I have picked, well, New Nightmare, that's my Freddy film. It might not be everyone else's, but that's mine, you know? The original's still mine, but yes, after that it's New Nightmare. And then I was just like, this isn't a bad movie. I, it's just that the other ones are out there and they exist. That's yeah. That's the only thing that's bad. It's you know? hard. It's, re it's really fucking hard. Well, you know what I understand is what was the outrage? I'm kind of curious what the overwhelming criticism was. It, Jack Earl Haley. That's point blank. Oh. I mean, there Which was no. Which is insane because he was like, it's <laughs> insane because he was such a good actor. Like I said, he acted the fuck out of his role. He was they given, did. he <laughs> understood the assignment. I, and I agree entirely. And the the movie is great because of him, but the people hated it because it wasn't Robert. It wasn't the original makeup. Yeah. And you you have, and I mean, I see this so much. Like I follow, you know, several people on YouTube that are like old horror fans, older horror fans, and they're setting their ways. Like, I mean, I've heard them talking about the new Scream 6, and they gave it down the road. It was like the worst. They're like, this is the biggest piece of shit I've ever seen in years. And I'm like, what the fuck movie did you watch? Yeah, I mean, Calm down, Boomer. Stop <laughs> yeah. going off of member berries. <laughs> it's hard. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the fans went to go watch this film, and they said exactly what you said. You know, it's not the same. It's not Robert. Oh, boo-hoo. We knew it wasn't Robert. It wasn't the same makeup. Okay, but it was realistic. If anything, if there was anything to complain about, it would have been kind of the storyline. Not so much just the molestation, but the fact that it was pretty bland, if you think about it. it you know, my same biggest, shit, different day. My biggest problem with Robert England, they turned him into a farce of the character. No, Robert they, England made his character. So it's not they, it's The him. director allowed it. Allowed it, yeah. Okay, so it wasn't Robert England. It was 
You know why? Because he fucking sold. He, uh, I know, bought. but he, he, his character became farcical. Like, it wasn't <laughs> really, like, when I got to the point when I was watching a Freddy movie, it wasn't really scary. That's the reason I watched it more, those more as a kid, because I could watch them without being scared. Yeah. I mean, honestly. Remember, the best thing I ever said about it was it Dream Warriors. I was like, they're not the Dream Warriors; they're the Dream Police at best. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. They and when they came, because they they did them dirty. Like they never actually like when they came back for the other the next film, they just killed them off like in the first few minutes. And it's like, what the fuck? Was yeah, that all it's about? like a nothing, anyways. But uh, moving but, back to this, there there was things to complain about, but the actor was not it. I'm just surprised he was the main gripe for people. Yeah. I mean, like, it was different. Like, it took me a second. I looked at his face, and I was like, oh, no, this is. And I was like, oh, wait a second. He looks like a fucking legit. Like, they did a good job with that makeup. I mean, I 100% agree with you that I don't understand because he is so good in this movie. Yeah. But the the fact is, the same people I'm talking about are just now coming around and admitting that early 2000s horror, i.e., uh, you know, the House of Wax, you know, remake with Paris Hilton. Or any remake. A, or, or any remake that, you know, like House on the Hill uh, or whatever, House on Haunted Hill. They, wa- they weren't that bad. They're just now admitting that because at the time, I was following these same people. They were uh, back in the day when they first came out this movie's trash, nothing like the good movies in the 80s. They're just now admitting that the early 2000s stuff's good, so we're going to have to give them another 20 years before they finally admit they need this stuff yeah. coming out now is actually Or anything. something shittier has to come out, and they're like, okay, my bad. <laughs> you know? Um, it's, it's You know, like I said, if I had seen this in theaters, I would have been a little sad because I honestly would have went in with the same expectations. Thankfully... Mm-hmm. I have been forced against my will. Just kidding. I have been put in a position where I needed to watch all of these movies. So we saw so many different versions of Freddy. Makeup, you know, character pretty much remained kind of the same for the most part uh, until it got better in 1994. Yes. If you look at Robert England and that, what's the other dude's name that played Freddy? Jackie, uh, Jackie, Jackie Earl, Earl Jones. Haley. I'm just kidding. <laughs> he, to me, is a more threatening. Like Robert England, yeah, he, he's threatening, but something about the other guy that played Jackie's when he played Freddy, that is menacing as fuck. It, uh, something about his delivery. Yeah. Felt no, he was way, supposed to be. He was supposed to be. I know, but that's the idea. And it's, that's probably why they hired him because he was able to portray that the way that they wanted it. And to I think be done. he nailed it. I think like, he did. Oh no, he did. We he he took his role and he ran with it. Do you think that people were offended that ha- that are actually burn victims? You think they were offended or do you think they felt represented you know by what? this by this face? Don't watch the fucking movie. I just want to know, like, what what do you think the site was on? Like, holy shit, I really do look like that. That's so, awesome. So what's the deal? We're, all, the only people that can pay Freddy now is a burn victim? No, no, no. <laughs> Shut up. That's not where I'm going with that. I'm just saying. No, but I'm saying with that with that train of thought, you're setting the groundwork. It's like, it's so what? So they have a person that's normal Freddy, and then when Freddy gets burned, it has to be played by a burn victim? Okay. Correction. Have you- <laughs> correction. It can only be a burned uh, minor attracted person yes. that can play the part. Specifically. That's a very hard demographic to fill. Not hard if, <laughs> if, if, if they're open and out in the open and then vigilante justice comes along. Uh, that's true. I think we can make them. The so what? The dude's going to burn himself so we can no, land the Freddy No, we're going to burn him for him. It's a win-win. Really? Because you, you can't do it to yourself because then you go to hell. Yeah, then who's going to watch the movie? <laughs> do, okay, there. I know you guys have seen the photos of certain burn victims where they've gotten facial reconstruction surgery and they fucking look just like this Freddy, okay? You know what's the... Do you think they fucking saw that and like, that's not what I look like and it's exactly what they look like? Let me tell you a story about how stupid people are because this really plays into the burn victim idea. I remember one time I was watching Maury Povich and they had this lady on. Black lady was a model, top of her game, <clears throat> fucking smoking hot, everything. Well, she was getting ready in the morning, and she had spilt alcohol all over the counter, like rubbing alcohol. Yeah. And then she grabbed it, wiped it up with a rag, and then while she was doing her makeup, she used the same rag to kind of clean off her face a little bit. And then about a minute later, she grabbed a cigarette and lit it, and no. guess what oh fucking my God. happened? Burned her face into a Freddy Cougar fucking portrait. And then th- there were had her on the show, and everybody felt so bad. And I was like, how fucking dumb are you? 98% <laughs> alcohol, 
and you decide to follow it up in the bathroom and smoke a cigarette. Listen, I, I often wondered why more, uh, you know, uh, women back in the 80s didn't have that problem to begin with. All that Aquanet, Aquanet. that spraying on their hair and then, and then lighting up a cigarette right after. I mean, it, it was just burn victims left and right. should have been. It's something that the, the rubbing alcohol says over and over. Highly flammable. And then you <laughs> soaked it up with a rag. It smells like alcohol. And then you touch your face with it. And then you follow it up by smoking a cigarette. I mean, who hasn't done that? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's like the people that are out pumping gas and smoking. Oh, I mean, yeah. Come on, you know, it's. That's different. <laughs> you, the fumes are more dispersed. You're not in a concentrated area. You're you're, you're not lighting it directly by the fume. You, it'd be like you putting out gasoline on your face and then lighting a cigarette immediately. In a Who freak gasoline gonna, fight yeah, accident? Yeah. <laughs> like, what is going on in your brain? Like, you failed science back in eighth grade? Does Hey, if if I was part of if I was a male model and I was with other male models and we poured gasoline all over each other and then lit a cigarette, would that make us all stupid? It would make, make you Freddy Krueger actors. Yes, it'd make you prime candidates to start a yes. Freddy Krueger movie. Where did this conversation go? Uh, Where are we? I, Zoolander's a good movie. I'm it just throwing is. it out there. <laughs> Not Death Holler related, but thirteen out of ten we recommend. Uh <laughs> But I was going to say about this backlash is that they gave a lot of backlash, uh, and some people still hate it, that oh, Friday yeah. the 13th remake. That remake's good, in my opinion. I don't know why. I mean, I liked it like this one. I mean, I didn't see the and, – and people gave shit. It's like, that Jason's stupid because he's running. It's like, why Why is it a problem that Jason runs yeah. if he's a living dude? And he's okay. like, I mean, that's how he would let's, take you out. Let's break that down just a little bit. So the guy that teleports yes. <laughs> and takes, like, electricity, explosions, a whole nine, and all this stuff, that's in the wheelhouse. But for some reason, him being having the ability to run, that's way outside the wheelhouse. And, the, and and they're like, and he's he's running, and he's a redneck defending a pot patch. That's so stupid. I'm like, no, that's realistic. You yes. Come out to the movies yes. and see if that won't happen to you. There is a ton of good old boys that like to grow and smoke weed. <laughs> I don't think people understand that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i just I, I don't get it like i <clears throat> seriously some of these people i mean I, I don't think you can make them happy no matter what oh, you yeah. do. i mean yeah i mean like i said i would have had the same expectations going in and then i would have walked out and been might have been sad but then after a rewatch which i will not be doing but after a rewatch i would be like okay let's let's wiki wiki break it down and i guess that's technically our unofficial job is to wiki wiki break it down yeah so <clears> i mean <throat> i i think i mean just to wrap it or just kind of sum it up a little bit i, I think we all enjoyed it it's I, I think it's more hate than it deserves i mean yeah. it, was, it was a good <clears throat> film for what they were attempting to do it, it was just different is the only thing yeah it's, would, would you would you say you would rewatch this movie I would rewatch it. Same with yes. me. Easily. It's every time I watch it, it's like, yeah, this movie holds up really good. I'll tell you a movie that I'd rewatch more often though, and that would be Wes Craven's New Nightmare. New Nightmare, yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, on the Raina scale of rewatch, what have I recommended to this is the third this not this movie, but New Nightmare is what, the third movie I said I would rewatch out of yes. how many movies have we watched now? <laughs> what, when was New Nightmare made? Ninety four. ninety four, yeah. How have you never watched that? I don't know because I wasn't a big horror kid when I was growing up, Noah. You know what my favorite movie that favorite part of that movie is? Huh. Skin in the cat. Oh when yeah. He, when he drags her around the room. Yeah, I want to play Skin the Cat. That was yeah. like, well, yeah, we yeah. all we really like that scene, especially because it, it it's basically like the first movie. It's, well, it's such an iconic scene. You know what I read about this specific film, since we're talking about scenes that we've seen before, is that I was told that this movie took some of the best scenes of other Freddy films and used it to kind of create this film. But I don't feel that way. I feel like a new nightmare did that. Yeah. New nightmare did that. <clears throat> it, I did not get that from this movie at no, all. I feel not like this all. movie went for a totally different look, uh, totally visually. It was different. Uh, I, they went for a whole different route with it. Yeah. And that's fine with me. I'm not upset with that. I think new nightmare fucking killed it again. New nightmare. Number three of 50 or more films that we've reviewed. <laughs> that and that's I'm I'm I think I'm being traumatic, but still uh, that I would that I would rewatch. In fact, we probably need to start keeping a list because it's so it's very few films that I would rewatch. 
whereas I would probably rewatch most of them. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm a one and done, you know? <laughs> Uh, I don't know how many times I've watched Happy Death Day, and I'm so looking forward to watching it again for our review next oh, week. Oh, yeah, so. that's our that's our birthday movies. <laughs> you, you know what one of my favorite movies is, and I don't think my wife would ever watch it, is uh, it's an old movie. I want to say won't watch it. 70s, maybe late 70s or maybe early, I forgot. It's um with... um. Is it a horror film? No. Okay. It's an awesome movie. It's one of my favorites. It's uh, a boy and his dog. I would watch that movie. Oh, yeah. I've, I've been meaning yes. to watch that movie. I that, would absolutely watch that movie. That's one of my favorite movies with Don Johnson. He's a uh, young yeah. Don Johnson. Uh, based on, uh, it was a uh, it was a science fiction short story by, uh, is it Heinlein? Was he the one that wrote that? Yes. I, I, it was, and uh, yeah, it. I, I'm pretty sure it was the, one of the inspirations for the Fallout games. Oh, 100%. Took, yeah. Yeah. I could see that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but it, it's a good film. I like the concept of it. His dog had mental telepathy. Yes. Yes. What the fuck? Yes. His dog looks like zero. The dog was. Oh wait, no, she no, it doesn't. The dog was kidding. basically the brains of the operation. Wow. Yeah. The, the I, I want to watch could, that dog. Wait, does the dog die? No. Okay, good. I want to watch it. What's even uh, better is how the dog lives. Oh, okay. It's really <laughs> twisted. Okay. Yeah, because uh, Don Johnson's, uh, you know, being a guy and being one of the last <laughs> men in the apocalypse, he's kind of dragged around by his dick, and the dog's the one that has to look out for him. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, he can't read, but the dog can read, so the dog tells him like how to do certain things. What the fuck, it's dude? He- it's a hell of a good movie. It's, I need to watch good. that. I would absolutely watch that. All right, let's <clears throat> move on to trivia for this. One. 